Hi, I'm Dr. Joni Liu. I'm the founder of Extraordinary Sports Medicine, where we uh, help um, athletes reverse their injuries, get back in the game they love, and improve their lives. And I'm here today to talk about Super Bowl. And let your friends know that I'm on live right now, because there are some very important success principles to be learned from the Super Bowl that happened last Sunday. And, you know, I love watching sports. I, I've been a sports lover ever since I can remember. And the thing is, is that it's really important to know that when you watch a sports program, you are actually watching a snippet of life. And within, you know, a couple of hours, whether there's success or failure. And what's important here is to know that um, I was a pretty neutral observer of the game. I didn't have a favorite team involved at the Super Bowl this year and so all I wanted to do was to enjoy myself and hope for the best. Okay? Now, immediate, almost immediately the Patriots and the Falcons um, took sides. I mean, and, and the Patriots were being slaughtered by by the Atlantic Falcons, and and I thought, wow, you know, is this going to be another blowout? Because the Super Bowl is often called the Super Bowl as well, and so I wondered if if this was going to be another one of those cases. Because by um, the end of the third quarter, it was twenty eight to three for Atlanta, and it looked like a sure thing, right? Um, comeback stories aren't that common in the NFL, unlike in the CFL, which is my favorite football league, uh, where you better not leave your seats even in the last few minutes of the game because anything can happen in the CFL, okay? So it's pretty cool to watch the Super Bowl as it did as, as Tom Brady led his team to come back, okay? Now what's interesting is that um, I guess it's kind of easy to say that one team wanted it more than the other, but I don't think it's really just that. Um, every team that made it to the playoffs this year deserved to be in the final. Um, but there were the usual upsets and the usual disappointments that led up to the Patriots and the Falcons heading off each other. And what's interesting here is that... Um, the Patriots did not give up, okay? I guess when you look at the success principles of people who have been extremely successful, it is really, it comes down to this, is that they never give up. Even when things look really bad, and things really did look bad. I mean, Tom Brady, he was pounded, he was sacked at least four times that I saw. So I knew he was pretty sore, okay, and and so his O line wasn't doing their job, and because Atlanta was thank you, <laughs> oh I love it footballs, and because uh, Atlanta was piling up on the scores, it also meant that the D line for the Patriots weren't doing their jobs either, and they were really tired because obviously Atlanta was out there, um, their offense offense was out there a lot longer than their defense and when you're playing defense it's pretty tough work okay and when you don't get much of a break it even gets tougher but okay so at at the half they go back in you know um, into their locker rooms and God knows what the coach is saying thank you very much except I don't understand what you're saying to me but I'm sure it's very nice and so they went into their locker rooms and, you know, there was probably a pep talk um, in the Patriots, you know, to get them um, back into the game, to get their headspace back into the game. But, you know, they still continued to lose points. So what turned it around? I don't know. Hi. I don't know at which point it turned around, but all of a sudden the momentum started to shift. And maybe it started to shift Maybe it really started to shift when the Atlanta Falcons uh, qu quarterback got sacked. That's maybe when it really did shift. But the thing is, is that it all happens in here, okay? And it all happens in here. Yeah, Sergey, I love that name. <laughs> Thank you. 
And so what's really important here is understanding that winners always have a short memory. So in spite of all the things that happened, all the stuff, all the points that piled up against them during that entire game, they did not dwell on them for very long. It has to be that way because what happens in our mind when we become discouraged? Do we go downhill and give up? A lot of people do. Or we get discouraged for a little while, we check it and we say, look, we still have time. That's what I always say. Yes, they're not victims. <laughs> they are victors. You're damn right. And that's the difference between the Russian people. Well, one of these days I'm going to go vacation there. I'm interested in going down to St. Petersburg and all that sort of thing. I mean, the world is my oyster, right? I'll be close to that in the summer. I'm going to be in, uh, well, in China this summer, in Beijing and Shanghai this summer. So we were looking at our trips, so that was the one that we happened to pick. But anyway, going back to my topic, winners do have short memories because they don't get down. And that's the important success principle that we have to learn. Because in sports, nothing is ever certain. Just like in life, nothing is ever certain. We need to know that if we really want something, that we never give up until it really is the end of time. You know, so when that clock at the Super Bowl counts down and we've done our best, that's all you can walk away with, okay? But the thing is, is that winners have short memories. And that's what I talked about a few weeks ago. We can never forget that, okay? <laughs> so I know it's a paradox. We can't forget a basic rule. But while we're trying to be successful, we have to understand that there's going to be obstacles. There are going to be challenges that are going to test us all along the way. And there's going to be people who are going to say bad things about us, who are going to say bad things right to our faces, who are going to say, I don't believe in you. Right? I'm losing. You've got to get that. That's right. That's right. It's the same lesson in life. How strong are you really? Are you willing to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, get back on the wagon, and keep going. Now the thing is, is that you have to have a desire, a burning desire. Rory McDonald. <laughs> like that name. You've got to have that burning desire. So these two teams had a burning desire for that trophy that day. And I don't know what happened to the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know exactly what happened with Tom Brady and the whole crew, but obviously the whole crew still believed in themselves. They believed in themselves, and they continued to go and play, and finally they came out on top. Because it's never say never until it really is over. Unfortunately, there always has to be a loser. So um, Tom Brady... They, they tied the game, and then they went into overtime. The first game ever that they went into overtime. And boxing is big here when his box gets struck. The good have the mind. Yeah. Don't be afraid of being struck. Yes. Don't be afraid. It's true. Fear is the one thing that makes people fail, and the only time you fail is when you quit. Okay? Don't forget that. So if there's anything that you really want out there in your life, and you've got a plan for it. You just take that first step. And you just keep taking those steps. And the thing is, is that, yeah, while well, you're planning, it's a good idea to have a deadline. You know, make it short so you make it, so you make it feel urgent. Yeah, what if you never begin? Then, okay, if you're too afraid, then it's really not the right goal. It's really not the right desire. Because you're not fired up by it, okay? That's how you know when you are fired up by a desire, okay? That's how you know. I mean, my goal is hope for millions with brain injury. I intend to create a 
online brain training course for people with post-concussion syndrome. I created a crowdfunding uh, campaign and go fund me for it. It didn't work out. I, got, I did get some money out of it and I will be using it in order to create this, this tool that people are needing right now. But the thing is, is because I went public with it, because I went for it, I made myself look stupid, I made myself look foolish, I, I asked a lot of people for help, didn't get it, but it attracted some very important people into my life who might be willing to fund the entire research project and in fact expanded my whole premise of what this research project will look like, okay? So I'm not giving up on it because I know people really need this. And so now I've gotten together a group of people with post-concussion syndrome. I'm going to teach the course to them and they're going to help me to build this course. So it's going to be built with people with post-concussion syndrome for people with post-concussion syndrome. With a healing process that I already know works one-on-one. -on -one. So now can I scale it? To help people in a group setting that's what I need to find out but the thing is is that that's my dream that's my goal and and yes there have been challenges and obstacles all the way through but I'm not giving up because for the first time in my life I really know what I want because I have what I need to do it and that's so I'm fired up <laughs> I'm fired up because this that's why your goal yes yes totally you're only a failure if you quit so you've got to find something that really fires you up it's what Napoleon Hill calls a definite aim which um, which just fills you with so much desire okay that's what it is it's how you feel about it when you get up in the morning, every time you think about it, how does it make you feel? And if you're a, it, it does have something to do with a purpose for sure. Yeah, it's a reason for living. Okay, too many of us, too, way too many of us don't have a purpose. We just go from day to day doing the same old, same old, thinking the same old, same old. We, and life, we think, doesn't change, but it does. For people like that, they're not happy, they're not fulfilled, and, and that's when your body breaks down, and that's when your mind breaks down. So this is part and parcel, one of the reasons why we need to have a course like this, because online brain training, I'm going to turn that on its head, because the original premise for it doesn't really work anyways. <laughs> I'm going to be helping people with their emotional stuff because that is the only important thing. Helping people solve their problems. That's the only important thing. Okay, so that's it for this week. If you know anybody who needs help with a concussion or post-concussion syndrome right now, you can send them to Amazon to get my best-selling book, Heal Your Concussion, How to Quickly and Effectively Get Back in the Game. Do I speak Russian? I'm sorry I don't. <laughs> I'm only English speaking. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. Bye.